Hi everybody, Enosh here, and I got a pretty cool theory about Lex Luthor that just might answer some questions about his personality in Batman vs Superman. Stick around. Alright, so Batman vs Superman. Now we're on the other side of its release, and well, this has been a very divisive movie. I mean, a lot of people can't seem to agree about it. You got a lot of fans and a lot of critics who absolutely hated the movie. They don't understand it. They don't understand the plot points. They think that there is no plot and there's plot holes. They think they don't understand why the characters do the things that they do. And then on the other side of the coin, you have people like me who, well, I'm very familiar with DC Comics lore and I absolutely loved it. And there's a lot of people who have actually gone in to see the movie thinking they weren't gonna like it and came out loving it just like me. So I don't know what side of that fence that you're on, but whatever side of it that you're on, you know, a lot of people seem to agree about the same thing, and that is Jesse Eisenberg's portrayal of Lex Luthor. Now I'll admit, when I went in to see this movie, man, right off the bat, I thought I was going to absolutely hate Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. He doesn't act like the Lex we all know, he doesn't seem to have the same personality or the same motivations, so how could it possibly be good? But I will say that as the movie went on, I absolutely loved it more and more. But then here's this thing. You see, after seeing it the second time, I noticed something that my wife Tiffany noticed too. And that is, why does Lex Luthor keep bringing up his dead dad? Six times in the movie, Lex mentions his father and how he died and how he was orphaned. And then he talks about weird things like, hey, I left a whole room in my mansion exactly like my dad wanted it. Why would you do that? Including the pictures and everything. And that picture that uh, plays a role in kind of talking about uh, the future of the DC universe. Now we're gonna get into some spoilers here. So if you don't wanna know anything about Batman versus Superman, I suggest that you probably save this video for later. But here's the thing. Lex talks about that, and he talks about that room that he left just like his dad's. He then goes on to try to share a drink with the senator and offers her this, this whiskey that he says was his dad's favorite whiskey. And then proceeds to drink it himself, as if, you know, hey, I really like it too. So this is kind of strange because that's all we hear about his dad. Just these one these one-off little comments about the Lex Luthor before Alexander Luthor, which Jesse Eisenberg is referred to a couple of times in the movie as Alexander. Why is that important? And why should that throw up some red flags to us? Well, here's why. Because if you're a DC Comics fan like me, you may remember that in the early 90s, before they killed off Superman in the Death of Superman uh, storyline, that they actually had a whole storyline revolving around the death of Lex Luthor. You see, Lex Luthor was the Lex Luthor we all know and love back then. He was a bald, kind of overweight guy, billionaire, ran all kinds of companies, but was giving Superman all kinds of trouble behind the scenes. Nobody knew that Lex was doing all these things. Lois Lane was always trying to prove that he was. The Daily Planet was kind of trying to prove that he was that he was secretly evil, but they could never, you know, pin him down to it. So eventually, because Lex Luthor wore a kryptonite ring that he kept just in case Superman, you know, came after him one day. Lex Luthor developed radiation poisoning and got cancer from the ring, from the kryptonite always being on his body. So after much time, well, Lex Luthor died. He died of cancer. And that's kind of a shock to those of us who were fans reading the comic books at the time because how are you gonna kill off Superman's number one nemesis right there in the comic? You know, what, what comes after that? And so for the longest time, there was no Lex Luthor. They went on, there were other villains, there were other stories, but there was no Lex Luthor. There was nobody that took over the Lex Luthor uh, uh, empire, as it were, took over the company or was an heir because he didn't have any children. But then something strange happened, and that was there was a young man found whose name was Alexander Luthor, and he lived in Australia. He was found to be an heir to Lex, that he was a son that Lex had that nobody knew about. This Lex Luthor had long red hair. Now, he did have a red beard as well, but he was from Australia. He was kind of a rugged guy, he, but he was a young, hip kind of guy. He was a humanitarian. He was somebody who came in and once he was found, he came in and took over the company, took over 
everything that Lex had before, but he was going to point it in a new and positive direction. He even seemed to have a positive attitude towards Superman and was doing everything he could to help, even putting together like his own little personal army to help out in situations that arose in Metropolis. Until, after a while, it was revealed to us that this Lex Luthor was no son of the original Lex Luthor, but that he was a clone of Lex Luthor, who Lex Luthor, knowing that he was dying, actually put his consciousness and mind into this new body. So this whole time that we had thought, well, hey, this is a pretty good guy, secretly and behind the scenes, he was doing some pretty drastic things, and we never knew it. But then as they revealed it, we saw more and more of those things come about. And then even Superman was privy to the situation after a while. And then came Death of Superman and things like that. So in, in watching Batman vs. Superman, and we see these things about Jesse Eisenberg's character. I mean, he's got this long hair, he's young, he's hip. He's kind of this Mark Zuckerberg kind of uh, billionaire type. Well, obviously, he wouldn't be a guy of the 90s and wouldn't be cool and hit by 90s standards if they were to kind of repeat that storyline today. He would be this young, hip, uh, millennial type of billionaire. And that's what we saw in Batman vs. Superman. So it started making me ask the question, you know, we didn't see when Lex Luthor died. We haven't seen a picture of him. He could very well have been alive at the time that of Man of Steel. When everything was going down in Man of Steel, Lex Luthor Sr. could have still been around. All we know is Lex Luthor Jr. or Alexander Luthor, who's played by Jesse Eisenberg, he talks about being orphaned by his dad, but we don't know any of that situation. We don't know where Jesse's character came from. We don't know if he just showed up one day and took over for the older Lex, but he talks about his dad in just some very interesting and strange ways. So it got me to thinking, what if Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor is actually a clone of the original Lex Luthor, and that is yet to be revealed? I mean, he's got the long hair. The long red hair is, is kind of a giveaway, plus the young hip thing that's totally out of character. And it was also reported that uh, Zack Snyder actually had considered hiring Brian Cranston to be Lex Luthor, and that Jesse Eisenberg came in to read for uh, Jimmy Olsen but then somewhere in the process, they kind of changed their mind and said, hey, wait a second, why don't we go in this other direction here with Lex that's totally different? Something that the fans probably wouldn't be expecting. But I say that because Zack took from a lot of different stories in, uh, in uh, Batman vs. Superman. I mean, he took from The Dark Knight Returns. He took from uh, uh, the, Death of the Death of Superman storyline. He took from a lot of different storylines to put together Batman vs. Superman. What if one of those storylines that he added was the death of Lex Luthor and the subsequent coming back of Lex Luthor as this younger cloned body? Just saying, I put a lot of thought into this, and I think that this could very well be where they're going with the DC Universe. What do you think? Do you think it's possible that it's possible that it's plausible? I mean, were you reading comics back then? Do you remember the death of uh, Lex Luthor's storyline? Do you say, Enosh, you know, I think you're onto something there, and it could answer a lot of questions about this Lex Luthor. Or are you the mind to say, no, nope, I just didn't like it. I don't think that they're that smart to even pull something like that off, and I just totally reject it. Hey, whatever it is, I would like to hear your thoughts on this theory. I would like to know what you think about the possibility of Alexander Luthor being a clone of Lex Luthor and that being revealed in subsequent movies. Will you leave a comment down in the comment section? If you like this video, hey, give me a thumbs up. And while you're here, why don't you subscribe so that you'll know when I'm doing new videos and when new things are coming about, okay? We talk about a lot of things here on the channel, so I would love to have you be a part of that. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.